Hey there, Nectar Hackers here. In this video, we're going to go over how to pretty substantially reduce downtime during code deploys if you happen to be deploying to a single server using Docker Compose. So check this out. I have this Dockerized application here, and if I have the project in the background, it is going to start all these containers in the background. Typically in development, you wouldn't use a dash D flag there because you'd want things to run in the foreground so you can check out the terminal output and then control C it. But this project, by the way, is available on GitHub. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. It's an example Dockerized Flask app that you can build your app on top of. Here it is running in the browser. Nothing too fancy, but it does pull together a number of different things. We can see here that Postgres is running, Redis is running, as well as the web and worker. And then we are using some CSS and JavaScript powered by ES build. All those things run in a separate container. But notice here that it took about six and a half seconds for everything to up from scratch. And now let's just say that I wanted to make a change to this code base. So I'm just going to add a comment here and then uh, rebuild my Docker image. Now in production, typically you might do this build step in a CI server, and then you would push it up to a Docker registry. And then on your server in production, all you would do is run a Docker compose pull, and then you would restart everything. And this is where things get interesting because if we rerun this same exact Docker compose up command here, Docker Compose up by itself, it's smart enough to not recreate Postgres and Redis and any other containers that didn't change. Now, the JavaScript and CSS containers, they did change due to how I have things set up because uh, just making a change here in the Flask application, the this entire project is copied into the JavaScript and CSS images because uh, due to the way Tailwind works, like it needs to know about Flask templates. So, you know, I copy all that stuff in. Not super important for the sake of this video, but understand they got recreated because of that, not due to just like some crazy weird bug with Docker Compose up. But if I do a Docker container LS here, Notice that all the containers that just got recreated because of the new Docker image, they've been up for about half a minute here, whereas Postgres and Redis, they've been up for potentially over a minute. And this is a really important takeaway, right? Because normally what you might do, you might do something like, you know, a Docker Compose uh, stop, and then, you know, you would do an and, and, and then a Docker Compose up. But let's time those commands just to see how long it takes and the differences of the output here. So when you do a Docker Compose stop, it's going to stop every single container associated to the project, right? That's going to include uh, Postgres and Redis. And we can see, let's call it 5.3 seconds there. And, uh, you know, if you were to, to, to do an opt-d again, you know, let's just use the same value as before, right? It's about, well, actually, no, let's just rerun it again from scratch because that's uh, after we did a code deploy there just to see the recreating stuff. But, you know, we're dealing with a grand total here of what? Let's call that nine seconds flat almost on the dot, right? We have five plus three is eight, two plus seven is nine, you know, a little bit of change on top of that. So it, it took 10 seconds to do a stop and an up. Whereas when you do an up by itself and just let Compose figure out what to change, that only took about six seconds total. So we're talking a difference of 10 seconds versus six seconds of downtime. And on a single server deploy, you know, you're just going to basically eat that downtime because you don't have, you know, like a load balancer and multiple copies of your app running. So there is actually a pretty substantial difference between 10 and 6 in this case. And, you know, normally when I'm not recording a video, it's a little bit less, maybe like 8 and 4. That's the numbers I got just before recording this video. And, um... It's actually even a little bit better in this case here with the recreating because normally this JavaScript and CSS containers, they wouldn't even be, even be running in production because your assets would be uh, just completely already digested, all ready to go. And uh, yeah, it just means that there's less things to recreate, which means this number is going to go down, making it even better. So yeah, we're talking like basically a 2x difference and it's really substantial. Now, you might be thinking like, well, like, how is that possible? Like, why would you ever do a stop up when up just does it by itself? Like, I mean, what this really boils down to is, uh, I guess, Docker Compose needing to make less API calls to Docker server. So you can actually test this one out, which is kind of neat. If you run a Docker events command, then this is going to just listen here for uh, any events that happen to come through Docker's API will get output here. That's what I was trying to say. But if I go back to here and, you know, let's change this to something else just to make sure we get an actual proper change and, and not just like reverting to another build here. But I will run a Docker Compose build. Actually, probably shouldn't have run the Docker events command so early because now I would imagine this is going to get flooded with some output maybe. Yeah, there we go. Nothing too crazy, but... Uh, Things are building, and we'll keep this invent, uh, events tab up here running. But here's uh, the interesting thing again. So let's run Docker Compose up D here, and we'll take a look at the output up here, which is a little bit more important. Now this one's flying through. I'm going to zoom in just so we can see things. Uh, let's see. There we go. So I added you know a couple new lines here. So we can see when we do a Docker Compose up dash D, uh, Docker uh, Compose is actually running a kill command to the container. Now. 
you might think like, well, what type of kill is that? Like, uh, is it going to do a SIG kill where the container doesn't even have a chance to to gracefully stop? And the answer to that is no. So if we very carefully look at this output here somewhere, uh, it will say signal 15. There we go. So signal 15 is actually sending a SIG term. So your containers will be able to gracefully stop based on whatever timeout settings that you have. So in other words, like there's no like shenanigans or cheating going around here to make Docker Compose up D a lot faster. Like it's it's not just going to kill them like immediately. So what I mean by that timeout feature, by the way, like if I go to my Compose uh, file here, we, we have the, the graceful time period here set to three seconds for the web and the worker here, which is, uh, you know, using this alias as an anchors pattern, which I talked about in my Docker Con video from last year. I'll leave a card to that one in case you missed that one. But uh, long story short, yeah, I mean, the idea here is Compose up by itself is smart enough to recreate these containers and it's properly going to stop them by sending a SIG term. So we get basically uh, the best of both worlds. At least that's what I've noticed since using this pattern for the last couple of years. I don't know exactly when I started. I feel like uh, as soon as Compose Up was available to do the, like the smart recreate, then uh, I just started using it. So, you know, I'll bear you the extra time here of doing like a, a stop and then an up and then like comparing the output here. But there will be less API calls, which is why it, uh, it is a, a quite a bit quicker. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to start using this pattern. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really does help in the end. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.